Welcome to lesson 3.2. Today we're going to talk about logarithmic functions. We're going to look at the graphs and some behaviors and then talk about some properties we can use to simplify. Let's get started. To begin with, we have our function y equals d plus a log base 10 of x minus c. So let's talk about what everything does. d is a thing that's kind of detached from the function. Uh, I have it in the front here, but it could also be in the back. And as with all of our other functions, it's going to be your vertical shift. So it's going to go up or it's going to go down based off of what d is. a is going to talk about the shape. Also, more importantly, if a is negative, it will reflect over the x-axis. And lastly, c is what we're doing to affect our x variable. It's going to go to the right if you have a negative c, and it's going to go to the left if you have a positive c. So that's all of our transformations based off of the log function. Another important feature here is we have a vertical asymptote. In this case, it's going to be the equation x equals 0. But your vertical asymptote is always going to be related to your c value, whereas for exponential functions, it was related to the b value on the outside. In this case, it's going to be the value that we're adding or subtracting to our x variable. All right, we're going to talk about some transformations here and what it does to our function, the original function. So to begin with, we have a 4 plus log base 10 of x minus 1. We have two values that are going to be a little bit different. We have this 4 and this minus 1. So our 4, that's going to be your vertical shift. So we're going to go up 4. And then the negative 1, that is your horizontal transformation. So we're going to go to the right 1. Again, we're doing the opposite of what it says. For our second function, we have a lot of things going on. To begin with, we have a negative 3. So that's going to take the whole function down 3. We also have a negative 2, and that's going to reflect everything over the x-axis. And last but not least, we have a positive 4. And again, because that's associated with our x value, it's a horizontal transformation. We're going to head do the opposite, and we're going to go to the left 4 units. OK, and now for the fun part, our properties. To begin with, we want to make sure we define a few things. So this is going to be for any x value that is positive. Usually negative x values are not part of your domain for your logs or your natural logs. We also want to say that a cannot equal 1, otherwise we would not have a logarithmic or an exponential function. So for our first property, we have a function y equals log base a of x if and only if x is equal to a to the y power. And what this is basically saying is you can go and interchange a function that's a log as an exponent. So if we had a log, we could rewrite our log as an exponential function. And the real question is, how do we do that? What we're going to end up doing is exchanging our x and our y values. So if we start off with something like y equals log base a of x, x is the value that we're evaluating. We're going to end up switching those two things. So I'm going to take my y value and my x value, and I'm going to swap them. And if I switch the x and the y, what ends up happening is the log cancels out, and instead, the y becomes an exponent. And that's a very, very important note to remember. A, log a logarithm is always an exponent. OK, let's go ahead and look at that property a few more times. So for the first example, we see you have log base 2 of 16 is equal to y. Again, what we're trying to do here is rewrite this as an exponential function. So I'm going to take my y value and the value that we are evaluating. Those two things are going to switch places. And when they switch places, the log is going to cancel out. And notice I now have 16 equals 2 to the y power. Because again, this is going to become an exponent. So I have my base, still my base, but my y value is an exponent, and it equals the value I was looking at. Let's try that again with our next example. So we have y equals log base 2 of 1 half. Again, the base is going to remain as your base throughout the entire problem. My y value is going to be an exponent, and it's going to equal the value that I'm trying to evaluate. So what I have now is 1 half equals 2 to the y power. If I wanted to go ahead and try and evaluate this or simplify this, we could say 2 is the same, sorry, 1 half is the same as 2 to the negative first power, which means that my y value would have to end up being negative 1. Let's apply this to our next example. Again, same process. My base is 4. The value I'm evaluating is 16, and then I have my y value. So when I rewrite this, my base will stay the same. y is going to be my exponent, 
and it's all going to equal the value I'm trying to evaluate. So we have 16 is equal to 4 to the y power. If I want to rewrite 16, I can say that's the same as 4 squared, which means that my y value would have to end up being 2. And then for my last example, following the same pattern, I'm going to take my base, I'm going to raise it to the y power, and it's going to equal the value I'm trying to evaluate. So in this case, I would have 1 is equal to 5 to the y. And the only way this is possible, the only way I can make this happen, is if y is actually going to equal 0. Because we define anything raised to the 0 power to, by default, equal 1, which means if 5 was raised to the 0 power, it would then equal 1. All right, we're going to go ahead and try and rewrite the following things. Uh, we want to write this as a log, though, so we are going backwards. So we want to note, again, what our base is. You have base of 9, your exponent is 3, and remember, a log always equals an exponent. So in this case, because my exponent is 3, that's what my log is going to equal. So I'm just going to go ahead and put equals 3. And then I'm swapping places of my exponent and my value. And I'm going to use that to rewrite this. Log base 9 of 729 equals 3. Just to read right here, our base was 9. It's still 9. Your exponent was 3, and your log always equals an exponent, so I put it equal to 3, and then I just switch places with the 729 and the 3 to get my final log expression. Okay, let's go ahead and do this one more time here. We're going to rewrite the following exponential expression as a log. Note that your base is 3, your exponent is negative 4, and then your value is 1 over 81. So when we rewrite this, we know it has to equal our exponent, so it's going to equal negative 4, and that's because a log always equals an exponent. I know that I have to have log base 3, because the base is always going to be the same. And then my exponent and my value are always going to swap places. So I just put 1 over 81. And now I have rewritten this as a logarithmic expression. For the next several examples, we're going to be using the following properties to help us simplify or solve some problems. The first property is log base a of 1 is equal to 0. And that is because anything raised to the 0 power is automatically 1. So if we're evaluating and we see log base something of 1, we can automatically say that it has to be 0. For our second property, log base a of a is defined to equal 1. And that's because anything raised to the first power is going to be itself. So if I notice that I have a base and a value that are the same, I can automatically default that to equal 1 when I'm simplifying. Uh, for our next ex uh, property, log base a of a is to the x is equal to x. And then a to the log base a of x is also equal to x. This is our inverse property. So if I notice that my base and my value are the same and I have an exponent, my answer is going to simplify to be whatever that exponent was. Over here, if I have an exponential expression with a log and these two values are the same, once again, I can say that it's going to simplify to be whatever my value was. And that's because of the inverse property. And finally, for our one-to-one -one property, I have log base a of x equaling log base a of y. If my bases are the same, then my expressions also have to be the same, so I can simply say that x is equal to y. Okay, let's do some examples, and as we're doing examples, we're going to, uh, we're going to indicate the properties we're using to help clarify things. Okay, so I want to solve for x. I have log base 6 of 6 is equal to x. I know that my bases are the same as the value. That's going to look exactly like property number 2. So if I notice that the base and the value are the same, then that whole expression simplifies to be 1. So this whole expression here will be 1, which means my answer is just x equals 1. Again, we use property 2 to help us simplify that. All right, for our next one, we want to simplify. I have log base 3 of 3 to the fifth. I notice that these are the same, and I have an exponent. So looking through my properties, Property number three, again, I have a base and value that are the same, and I have the exponent. And the inverse property says that the whole thing simplifies to be whatever my exponent was. So I can say that this whole portion is going to cancel. And using the inverse property or property three, I know the whole thing will simplify to be just five. Here we can see the other side of the inverse property. So I have an exponential equation, but my exponent has a log in it. So I see that my base for my exponential equation is 7. In my log, the base is also 7. So since these are the same, in the second half of property 3, they are also the same. 
And the value of my log is what my answer is going to simplify to be. So I know the 7 log 7 is going to basically cancel out. And my final answer is going to be 9, again using the second half of property 3. Okay, now we have to try and simplify this as much as we can using our properties. First thing I want to note is I have a fraction for my expression here, 1 fourth. And I can always rewrite fractions using negative exponents. So I can start by saying this is log base 4 of 4 to the negative first. And then if I use property 3, I notice my base and my value are the same. So this is going to simplify to be whatever my exponent was. So using the inverse property, which is number 3 again, I can say my final answer is x has to be negative 1. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try and simplify this one. Um, I notice that I have a 4 and a 16, and I know that 16 and 4 are related. And they're related in the way that 16 is 4 squared. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is log base, sorry, 1 fourth log base 4 of 4 squared. Going back to property 3 again, because the base and the value are the same, I know that that's going to simplify to be my exponent. So it's just this portion that's going to cancel out. I still have my 1 fourth. But now instead of that complicated log expression, I have 2. When I multiply that all together, I end up getting 1 half, which is my final answer. The natural log is a special form of the regular log, which means all of our transformations will be the exact same way. My d is still going to be a vertical shift, so it's either going to go up or it's going to go down. For my a, it's still going to reflect across the x-axis. Again, that's if you have a negative a value. And then for my c value, it's still going to be shifting to the right or to the left. Again, when we have the opposite, it'll go to the right if you have a negative c and to the left if you have a positive c. So all the transformations are going to act the same way as our log because this is a log, just a special form of it. This does also mean that we have the same idea with our vertical asymptotes. Our c value is going to directly affect that. In this case, we have a vertical asymptote of x equals 0, which means your c value is most likely 0 for that function. All right, to describe our transformations, we want to identify the numbers that are different from the regular natural log. So we have a 3, we have a negative 5, and we have another positive 3 on the inside. The first plus 3 is going to take the whole function, and it's going to move it up 3. The negative 5, because it's negative, it's going to reflect it across the x-axis. It's also going to affect the rate of increase of our function. We'll talk about that later. And then the last plus 3, because that's associated with our x, it's a horizontal shift. It's actually going to be going to the left 3. For our second function, your negative 2, that's your d value. It's going to take the whole thing down 2. Your 7, it's going to be affecting the shape, but there's no reflection, so we're going to leave it the same for now. And then the minus 2 with our x value is going to take the whole function and move it to the right by 2. Since the natural log is a special form of the regular log, a lot of our log properties are going to apply. To begin with, we can say that if we have x value greater than 0 and the function y equals the natural log of x, we could rewrite that as x equals e to the y power. Again, we want to note how this is happening. Your y value and your x value are switching places, we are losing the natural log and instead picking up an e value. So if I want to rewrite my following expression, e to the fourth e is equal to 54.598, I'm going to take my 4 and my 54, and those are going to be switching places, and when they do, I'm going to pick up a natural log. So there's no base here, but I, just like a log equaling an exponent, a natural log is also going to equal exponent. So I know the whole thing is going to have to equal 4. And then I'm going to have the natural log of 54.598. All right, we're going to go ahead and apply this again with another example. I have e to the negative second, and that equals approximately 0.135. I'm going to rewrite that using natural logs. Again, we want to highlight the point that a natural log always equals an exponent. So I know the whole thing is going to have to equal negative 2. I know the negative 2 and the 0.35 are going to swap places. So I have now the natural log of 0.135 is approximately equal to negative 2. Okay, we're going to finish out our remaining problems using some properties for natural logs, which are very similar to our properties for regular logs. 
Up at the very top, we can see them. The natch log of 1 is defined to equal 0. Again, because anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. So I notice if I'm taking the natch log of 1, I can simplify that to be 0. The natch log of e is defined to be 1 because e to the first power is equal to e. For our inverse property, natch log and e are inverses of themselves. So if I have the natch log of e, I'm going to simplify that to be whatever my exponent was, which is going to be my final answer. And if I have e raised to a natch log, again, because they are inverses, I'm going to simplify to get my value, which is going to be just x. And for our one-to-one -one property, if I have two natural logs, then my values have to be the same, so x has to equal y. All right, let's go ahead and look at our first problem here. We have the natural log of 1. Using property 1, I know that the natural log of 1 is defined to be 0. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as the square root of 0, which is going to be just 0. For our next example, I have another fractional expression. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this with negative exponents. So instead of the natural log of 1 over e to the second, we have the natural log of e to the negative second. Using my inverse property, or number 3, I can see that if I have the natural log of e, it's going to cancel out, and my exponent is going to be my final answer. So this whole thing will simplify to be my exponent, which is just negative 2. All right, again, using property number 3, I have the inverse property here. I have e raised to a power involving a natural log. And I know that if I have e raised to a power of a natural log, my answer is going to be whatever that value was. So in this case, the e and the natural log cancel out because they're inverses, and I'm left with 20 as my final answer. All right, and for my last example, we have the natural log of e, which is defined to be 1. So I know that this portion of my expression is going to be just 1. When I simplify, I have 3 times 1, which is going to be just 3. All right, guys, that does it for our uh, notes for this section. Go ahead and get started on the homework, and good luck.